In this video, we're going to take a look at setting up Visual Studio Code to support C++ projects. So by the end of it, you'll be able to write your own programs without needing to load up any other IDE. Yeah, it's going to be great. We're going to go through this step by step, and I'll make it very detailed and easy to follow. And let's just have fun with this. All right. Okay, so first things first, before we take a look at Visual Studio Code, we need to download a compiler. A compiler is software that translates what you're writing in your code into a format that can run and execute on the machine, in this case, Windows. We're going to be looking at using the MinGW compiler, which is a free and open source compiler that is used on Windows. So if you hop over to Google and just type in MinGW, you'll see several results. And what we want is the MinGW Minimalist GNU for Windows download. So let's go to the site, just hit the green download button. It will download a binary file to your downloads folder. Okay, if you go ahead and run the installer, then you will see a installation manager setup tool come up. Just hit the install button. And we wanna keep the directory as C MinGW and hit continue. And then it will download a few files in order to run the administration GUI tool. All right, here we go. So when that's finished, just hit the continue button. It will open this lovely GUI tool for us. So you see here that we have several options. We'll have the basic setup option clicked on the left and we have several packages here that we can choose to install. We've got a Minji developer tool. Oh, let's widen this up. We've got a Minji developer toolkit, Minji W32 base, Minji GCC ADA, a GCC Fortran, a GCC G++ package, and a GCC Objective-C, and an MSYS base package to install. So all we need to do is click and mark for installation on a few of these. We'll install the developer toolkit. We'll install the base. And we'll install the G++ package. You don't need the ADA, the Fortran, or the Objective-C. And then go here on the installation menu, click that open, and then select apply changes. And it'll say okay to proceed and just hit apply. And it will then download and install the relevant packages. This is gonna take a little bit of time, so I'll just cut to the next step. Okay, it looks like it's finished. You'll notice the text up here saying, all changes were applied successfully. You may now close this dialog. So let's go ahead and hit the close button and we can close out of this installation manager altogether. So now what we need to do is we need to add MinGW to our system path. So if you hit your Windows start key and just type in environment variables or start to type it in, then you should see an option here to edit your system environment variables. Go ahead and click that. Click on the environment variables button here. And then down in the system variable section, highlight the path, the path setting and hit edit. And you'll see a list of things which are in your system path. So if you go ahead and click new and then the browse button, and then let's go to our C MinGW folder. There we go. And we just need the bin, the bin folder in the path. Go ahead and hit OK. And you should now see it here as C MinGW slash bin. Hit OK again. Hit OK again. Hit OK again. All right. Now let's open a, I'm, I've installed Git on my machine. So I've got Git bash with me. So I'm going to open up a Git bash console, but you can open up any terminal window the regular Windows command prompt. And all you need to do to just verify that MinGW bin is in your path, just type in G++ dash dash version. And you should see a, a version tag here. We're using version 6.3.0 and then a whole bunch of uh, license information after that. Okay, good. So that's in our path. So now what we need to do is update Visual Studio Code to make use of that. So go to your favorite project folder and just create a folder called Hello World. 
and then let's go into the folder and then just create a new file calling it main.cpp okay and then if we just use code and then dot that will open up visual studio code from this current directory so visual studio code will start up okay and as soon as we click on the main.cpp file then Visual Studio Code will try to help us here by prompting us, do we want to install the recommended C++ extension pack from Microsoft for the C++ language? Hit yes or install, hit the install button and Visual Studio Code will now download and set this up for us. And let's go ahead and just type in a simple hello world. Include IO stream, int main, So we've got a very basic program here. We just want to display hello world to standard out and return zero from our prompt. And notice that the include IO stream header is now underlined in red. So let's go ahead and hover over it. And let's hit the quick fix and edit the compiler path setting. And so what happened, what will happen is that Visual Studio Code will in this folder, it will create a new folder called .vs code. And within that, it'll create a file here called c underscore cpp underscore properties dot json, which contains all the relevant configuration code for using Visual Studio code and C++. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to select the c slash c++ configurations widget here. And in the section that says compiler path, this is where we want to select the compiler path to our, to our mingw bin folder. So hit the down arrow here, and you'll see there's a bunch here already installed. I've got Visual Studio on the system already, which is why I see this. And so down here, you'll notice that we've got options for mingw, GCC, G++, or CP, CPP. So go ahead and highlight C mingw bin G++. Now that we've updated the compiler path to C mingw bin G++, then also make sure the IntelliSense mode is set to Windows-GCC-X64. Go ahead and save that. And then back to our program, you'll see here that now there's no more red underlining and it looks like our C++ code is good to go here. So if we highlight the play button on the top right corner of the IDE and then we can use we've got several options which show up here on which compiler we want to use we want to use the C slash C++ G++ EXE build and debug active file okay so if we run the program you can see here that we get our display of hello world and we can even choose the terminal window here and just by default, it's a PowerShell console that Visual Studio Code will give you. So we just need to type in dot slash main dot exe. And you'll see we get here the hello world. And you'll notice here on the left that the main exe binary has been built in the same folder as our main dot cpp source file. So if we want to change that at all, if we go into our task.json file, which is where Visual Studio Code will drop in the command line arguments for using G++. Okay, you can see here that Visual Studio Code has automatically set up a test.json file. And so here are some basic arguments that we're passing into the G++ compiler, which is our file name and our dash O. And here in this dash O, we've got a file dir name, and then we've got the file base name, no extension, .exe. So what we can do here is if we want to put the .exe in a different folder, like say a bin folder, we just add bin into that path and then let's hit let's go back and uh, hit play again and it will now create a bin folder with the main.exe executable for us now we can go in and debug this using the gdb debugger that comes with mingw so if you just if you hit the left mouse button on the line of the source code that you want to debug you'll see a nice red dot here which creates a breakpoint and then we go here on the runner debug menu and hit debug. 
And now when we run this, it will stop execution at this line, which we've selected. And so we can either step over it, step into it, or step out of step out of it. So assuming we want to, at some point, debug a loop. So here we can just hit the play, the continue button to keep going. Hello world again. And there we go. That's all we need to do to get up and running with C++ within Visual Studio Code. I hope this was an informative video for you. I hope you were able to use it to figure out how to do this locally on your machine. Let me know in the comments down below if you run into any issues. And we'll see you in the next video, everyone. Take it easy. Peace.